So, as most of you know, I was on a pilgrimage to Palestine, Israel, uh, with 42 other pastors. Uh, can you show us the picture? Yes. Other pastors and laity, lay leaders from and beyond New England Annual Conference. So we had two bishops, uh, three district superintendents, and many leaders. One of the good things, I was sharing with Stephanie that one of the good things about this trip is that I didn't have to lead anything. I was just like following, getting on the bus and getting off the bus. That's all I did. And I want to thank each one of you uh, for keeping me in your prayers for a safe and meaningful trip. Uh, While it was a spiritual pilgrimage for me, uh, I want to assure that uh, at each site we visited and worshipped at, I was thinking of Trinity Church. I was thinking of Trinity Church um, and all the things that I could bring back to the church and the message that I was experiencing there. So um, I wanted to assure you that there will be many more messages coming. Um, Today I was very excited, but I had to kind of like trim down what I had to share within the 10, 15 minutes uh, I had for today. So I brought a little gift um, from from the Holy Land. And... uh, All right. So this is a plate and a cup. It's a communion set uh, that uh, has a mosaic drawing or artwork of the two fishes and five loaves of bread. Um, And I brought this for you. And they're like they sell it in every store, so uh, it's not that special. But so I thought, (laughs) and they're like all over you. They're trying to sell you something everywhere you go. Uh, but um, what I thought was that it will make special is that um, if each one of you can sign um, in the back of this plate or under this, not, not in here because we're going to use it, uh, but under the cup or under the plate, uh, I'm going to leave it on the way out at the back so you will have a little Sharpie, colorful, all the colors, and um, choose your color and then just sign your name and I think that will be... Uh, what's going to make it special. Not because it's from the Holy Land, but because you all, all signed. Okay? Can we do that? So, um, shall we pray? Lord, let the words from my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts be acceptable in thy sight, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. For me, uh, this trip was my fifth visit to the Holy Land. Uh, if my memory is correct, I visited, I visited the Holy Land when I was in third grade, and then in fifth grade, and then in eighth grade, and then eleventh grade. So I had a little fun doing one of those then and now. Uh, photo comparisons as I went to different sites, and I'm sure some of, of some of you saw it. So this is the first one. Um, so this is uh, on the left. It's Dead Sea. It's what uh, the photos I took from Dead Sea. One on the right is me, like last Friday, and uh, <laughs> and, uh, and this, on, on left that's when I was in third grade. Uh, Dead Sea, putting on all the. Uh, Dead Sea mud, hearing that is good for your skin. So, um, yeah, that's the comparison. And the second one is um, where Via Dolorosa. So there's 14 stations of the walk to the uh, crucifixion where Jesus walked. And this is station three where Jesus fell for the first time. And um, on the left, I took that uh, picture when I was in eighth grade. And, and that was this Thursday uh, on the right. So that was um, my second comparison. And then the third one is Church of Annunciation. So this is where uh, church uh, was built to commemorate uh, Mary being told by the angel uh, that, that she will be 
having a baby Jesus. And that one on the left is also from eighth grade, and on the right is, uh, yeah, last week. And then the last one is from Sea of Galilee. Uh, that was 11th grade on the left. I was biking around uh, the Sea of Galilee with my friends, and, and the right one was on uh, last, sometime last week on the boat. Um, and I will, I will probably share more about that experience because we were worshiping on that boat yes, uh, last week, but it was very, very windy. And you know where there's a story about how Sea of Galilee is traveling, um, and, and it can, I can tell you now that it can be very troubling. And I cannot imagine Jesus falling asleep peacefully on that boat. That's, yeah. So I'll, I'll, I'll probably share more about that when that passage comes in. So, uh, so returning to the places where you were during the younger years was quite an experience. And I'll be... Um, uh, again, I'll have to do more, more reflection on what each one means for me. But what I knew for sure was that my experience was very unique compared to most of us who are there in the Holy Land for the first time or with those who has been in the land during their adulthood. So my, I think my, my experience was pretty unique. For me, this pilgrimage was powerful because it connected dots. It connected dots. I wonder if this will make sense to you, but it felt like I was dropping breadcrumbs along the journey of my life. And then I'm now tracing back where I came from. And that's not just about the physical sense of where I came from, but it was sense of God's call. Noticing the initial purpose that God had for me. So listening to the bells at the Church of Annunciation, which is, again, built to commemorate the angel uh, coming to Mary with the news about Christ, or being on the water of Sea of Galilee where Jesus called his first disciples and did his ministry of healing and preaching, and walking again on that road of Via Dolorosa, the processional route that Jesus walked towards his crucifixion, I knew that the connection was between where I am today to what I was 20 and 25 years ago, but also I experienced that it was connecting to something beyond my, my childhood, to the time of Jesus, to the message of Jesus, to that peace, to that forgiveness, to that justice, to that love that Jesus hoped for this humanity. It was a long connection of dots. So before I went, because there were so many things to do on my plate, I questioned myself. You know, I, I've been to the Holy Land for, for four times. You know, that's already more than many Christians in the world. Right? Do I really need, need this at this time in my life? Especially not long after uh, Soleimani assassination happened. The tension between Iran and Iraq was growing while the U.S. released a statement regarding Israeli-Palestinian sanction right after that, not to speak of the worldwide spread of the coronavirus. I was asking myself, do I really need to do this? And one thing for sure is that I really needed this pilgrimage. Um, Let me rephrase that. I was the one who really needed this pilgrimage. Today we read about the transfiguration story of Jesus. It was a happening witnessed by only a few. You know, there were Jesus, there was Jesus and then like three other disciples. Nobody else was there. And it happened. The light show, the vision. And Matthew says, He was transfigured before them. That's all it says about this event. Just like that. He was transfigured before them. As if if it was a, a typical thing that happened every now and then. Right? 
But the most important question that we need to ask ourselves is, who was, who was this event for? Who was this for? Was it for Jesus? For sure, he wasn't the one who did it, who did it because it was done unto him, as we read, he was transfigured, right? Derek Weber said, um, Jesus wore the glory as comfortable as he wore the shame of humanity. And he managed to glorify even that. He was who he was. That's all we need to say. What this means is that transfiguration was actually for them, for the few disciples who was with him. It was for them to know him as much as their human brains would allow them to know him. It was for us so that we can see him. It was for me. It was for me so that I could see him. And we know that this was good, right? Instantly we knew that it was good. We need to take a photo of this moment so that we can remember later. No, taking, photo, taking a photo is not enough. Let's build a tent so that we can just dwell in this. Let's keep this. This is nice. But Jesus says to Peter, no, no, Peter, this is not it. This is just a starting point. This is a change for moving, not for staying the same, not for settling in, but for moving on. And it's cer certainly not for going back to the good old days when we were younger, right? When the teenage version of me could bike around the Sea of Galilee. Now I prefer the bus ride. When we could climb the Mount of Olives, right? When I was in 11th grade and walked the Via Dolorosa all on one same day without being exhausted. When we could skip a night of sleep to go see the Dead Sea and swim and all in one day. This transfiguration is not going back to what we once were used to, but it is about nothing remains the same after the mountaintop experience of transfiguration. All of a sudden, they hear the voice from the cloud, this is my son whom I love. With him, I am well pleased. Listen to him. And the disciples were so scared, scared enough, to cost, almost cost their lives. They fell face down to the ground and then they felt a soft touch on their back, a familiar touch, a familiar voice telling them to get up, get up. Don't be afraid. When they looked up, they saw no one except Jesus. Many things happen in our lives. There are good times as well as bad times. There are some things that matter to us immediately as well as those things that we plan for future. They are all part of our, our lives. The emotional roller coaster that the disciples had to go through that night is all part of their lives. For me, tracing back the breadcrumbs that I left behind Growing up hearing the sound of the Muslim prayers from the mosque every day. Going to Korea to go to college and to fulfill my military duty. And then coming to Boston to go to seminary. And then to be appointed to Montpelier, Vermont. Marriage and having children. When I trace back all of these life events, which makes who I am today, it comes down to one thing for me, Christ, Christ. 
like the disciples, when they looked up, they saw no one except Jesus. And it doesn't end there. What it does is it, it clarifies where we go next. Whatever is happening right now in our world, whatever is happening right now in our denomination, whatever is happening right now in our church, in our Trinity Church, whatever is happening right now in each of our lives, once we see no one except Jesus, we know exactly where we go from there. Down the mountain. Down the mountain. The next destination is for us to go down the mountain. That's what we will do beginning on Ash Wednesday throughout the season of Lent. Lent, To go down. To be in a deeper touch with each of our spiritual journey. That's what I'm praying for this Lent. That will happen for each one of us. So as the postlude uh, for today... I will be playing a video that I took uh, of a typical lunchtime of the Holy Land. Uh, a view from a uh, top of city of Jerusalem looking at the Kidron Valley where all this history, layers and layers of history happened. Um, and the sound of it, the modern day sound of it, I, want, uh, I hope that will give us some insight of what the Holy Land means today or what it means to be holy in today's life. So I pray that we will be able to set aside some time away from the norms of our days to trace back to where it all began from, to trace into the layers of the history of this world and our personal journey up to this point and to the destination that God has set for us. Once again, hearing the voice when God proclaimed to each one of us, I am well pleased with you. I'm well pleased with you. And we'll walk together, this as a church family. And we pray for the presence of God, Christ, and the Holy Spirit among us. Amen.